here's Charlie Rangel. Congressman Rangel's here. He's here with us today. Maria Diaz Garfo is here. Evi Marcial. And we're happy that the quintessential congressman is here. He's joined us. Welcome, Charlie. Nice to see you. Carmen, yeah. And here's Carmen. Hi, Carmen. Socrates. Nice to see you. Zuleika, there he is. I brought him. There he is. con nosotros creando programas trayendo dinero para el mayor presento. se llama Mira, y prepárese para ese gran aplauso okay. Okay. el okay. Charlie Rango Welcome Charlie Rango Charlie Rango Thank you Thank you Estoy muy contento de estar con ustedes hoy Thank you so much. For all the men, please stand. Los hombres, pónganse de pie. They set the mood with this picture. There's something wrong with this picture. But I'm not going to give Vente. a speech to the men because the ones that I would like to talk to are not here. So I want to give a special accommodation for the men who are concerned enough about our women, those that mother our children, and all of the fathers that don't step up to the plate, it's you that come out with our women, it's you that go to our churches, and I just want to publicly, publicly thank you and tell the rest of our guys that they better get on the ball because we're going to go through a rough economic period. And families have to be families. They have to be men and women and mothers and fathers. And the grandparents need help. So please be seated and accept my very warm thank you for coming here because this should just be the beginning of the revolution where we need each and every man to stand by our women now more than ever. We were not born to be separate, we were born to be together. Our kids are entitled to us as grandfathers. So if you see some kid, with my age, a kid could be 60 years old, but if you see some kid that hasn't got a dad, grab him after the meeting's over. Ask what he intends to do with his life. Ask him about his experience so that you can help him. We owe this to each other. We owe it to each other. So sit down, please, he can say, por favor, and let me thank you for what you do. And to the ladies, I'm almost embarrassed to pick up a paycheck if a part of my responsibility is just to go in in the mornings and talk to a whole lot of beautiful women. I mean, men can eat their heart out, but you look beautiful today. And thank you once again for inviting me. I talked last night with Suleika. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of you. Thank you for the all the support that you've given to me uh, in, in September, you sent me back to Washington stronger than ever. Because they know it's not Charlie Randall, it's the citizens, it's our family, it's our community, it's our education, it's our housing, it's our medical needs. Uh, all of those things and most of all it's our job so that our kids and grandkids will be able to work. So this is not just over because Obama won. But I tell you this, the most important 
thing for you to do is to take a deep breath between now and November 2nd and to see who is in our better interest. Whether or not we're talking about a Puerto Rico that can stand on its economic feet so that anyone that comes here comes here if they want to visit, but they don't have to come here because there's no job. We're talking about health care for everybody. Not just old folks, but kids before they are born are entitled to have access to health care. And we're talking about education. There's a new world that's going to start out here, where we don't have gasoline, that we don't have to depend on coal. It's going to take a lot of brain power, but it's coming, and it's coming just the same way automobiles substituted with horses. We got to substitute oil. And we're going to do this so that we don't go to war, don't send our kids and grandkids to fight for oil in this war. And so what I'm saying to you is that the entire New York Democratic delegation recognizes the great tribute and investment that you made in us. And if we don't take care of our own folks and I'm one of us, then this is not what a civilization is all about. These are the years that you need comfort and not fears. These are the years that you don't have to worry, you should not have to worry about prescription or being able to find a decent place to live. You pay your dues and your children and your grandchildren may not be in a position to say thank you financially, but your government can and should. So anybody that's talking about ending Medicare, ending Social Security, they are not our friends. So I beg you. <laughs> if you listen to the people that are saying leave and privatize Social Security, cut back on Medicare, fight back.